difficult task of synthesizing his knowledge of the soul, gained in his many years of practice as a psychiatrist and analyst, into a fund of information available and applicable to everyone. He gives those clues to the nature and functioning of the psyche for which the modern man is painfully groping. The point of view he lays before us is a challenge to the spirit and evokes an active response in everyone who has felt within himself an urge to grow beyond his inheritance. With one exception, all the essays which make up this volume have been delivered as lectures. The German texts of four of them have been brought out in separate publications, and the others are to be found in a volume together with several other essays which have already appeared in English. We are indebted to Mrs. Violet DeLaslo for many helpful suggestions in regard to the essay, Psychotherapists or the Clergy. Both Dr. Jung and Mrs. Jung have been kind enough to read and criticize the translations in part. Carrie F. Baines, Zurich, March, 1933 Chapter 1. Dream Analysis in Its Practical Application The use of dream analysis in psychotherapy is still a much-debated question. Many practitioners find it indispensable in the treatment of neuroses and ascribe as much importance to the psychic activity manifested in dreams as to consciousness itself. Others, on the contrary, dispute the value of dream analysis and regard dreams as a negligible byproduct of the psyche. Obviously, if a person holds the view that the unconscious plays a leading role in the formation of neuroses, he will attribute practical significance to dreams as direct expressions of the unconscious. If, on the other hand, he denies the unconscious or thinks that it has no part in the development of neuroses, he will minimize the importance of dream analysis. It is regrettable that in this year of grace, 1931, more than half a century since Karras formulated the concept of the unconscious, over a century since Kant spoke of the immeasurable field of obscure ideas, and nearly two hundred years since Leibniz postulated an unconscious psychic activity, not to mention the achievements of Genet, Flournoy, and Freud, that after all this, the actuality of the unconscious should still be a matter for controversy. Since it is my intention to deal exclusively with questions of practical treatment, I will not attempt in this place a defense of the hypothesis of the unconscious, though it is obvious enough that dream analysis stands or falls with this hypothesis. Without it, the dream appears to be merely a freak of nature, a meaningless conglomerate of memory fragments left over from the happenings of the day. Were the dream nothing more than this, there would be no excuse for the present discussion. We must recognize the unconscious if we are to treat of dream analysis at all, for we do not resort to it as a mere exercise of the wits, but as a method for uncovering hitherto unconscious psychic contents which are causally related to the neurosis and therefore of importance in its treatment. Anyone who deems this hypothesis unacceptable must simply rule out the question of the practicability of dream analysis. But since, according to our hypothesis, the unconscious plays a causal part in the neurosis, and since dreams are the direct expression of unconscious psychic activity, the attempt to analyze and interpret dreams is entirely justified from a scientific standpoint. Quite apart from therapeutic results, we may expect this line of endeavor to give us scientific insight into psychic causality. For the practitioner, however, Scientific discoveries can at most be a gratifying byproduct of his efforts in the field of therapy. He will not feel called upon to apply dream analysis to his patients on the chance that it may throw light upon the problem of psychic causality. He may believe, of course, that the insight so gained is of therapeutic value, in which case he will regard dream analysis as one of his professional duties. It is well known that the Freudian school is of the opinion that important therapeutic effects are achieved by throwing light upon the unconscious causal factors, that is, by explaining them to the patient and thus making him conscious of the sources of his trouble. If we assume for the time being that this expectation is borne out by the facts, we can restrict ourselves to the questions whether or not dream analysis enables us to discover the unconscious causes of the neurosis and whether it can do this
Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to get this audiobook for free in just a few minutes. In this video, I'll guide you step by step. It's really simple and fast. In just a few minutes, you'll be able to listen to your audiobook for free. So, let's get started. Here are the steps you need to follow. Click on the link below the video to access the audiobook page. I want to emphasize that the method I'm showing you works with any book from the Amazon audiobook catalog offered by Audible. Make sure the option Free with Trial is displayed on the page. Then, click on the Try Audible button. You will be redirected to the Amazon website. If you already have an Amazon account, log in. Otherwise, you can easily create an account. Now, if you don't have an Amazon account, Here's how to create one. Click on the Create Your Amazon Account button at the bottom of the page. Fill in the fields of the form with your first name, last name, mobile phone number or email address, and password. Then click Continue to validate. You will receive a verification code at the email address you provided. Log in to that email account, copy the verification code, and paste it into the box requested by Amazon. Next, enter your phone number to receive a verification code via SMS. Insert this code into the box presented by Amazon and click the Create Your Amazon Account button. On the next page, Amazon will ask you to enter your credit card number. Don't worry, it won't be charged because it's the free trial period. If you decide to continue your subscription, you will be charged $14.95 per month after the free trial period. Click on Add Your Card. After adding your credit card, you will be redirected to this page asking for your personal information, such as first name, address, email, etc. Then click the Use This Address button. Once you have entered all the information requested by Amazon, you will finally arrive at this page. You will see that the book you have chosen is displayed, and all you have to do now is confirm it to listen to your audiobook. As you can see, the amount to be paid is $0. This first audiobook is completely free. Now click on the Try for Free button. Now your Audible account is created and you have access to your free audiobook. You can listen to the audiobook you chose directly on this Amazon page or on the Audible website. The most recent had been two years previously. I'd actually survived six months. I want to remind you once again that the method I've shown you here works with any book from the Amazon catalog audiobooks offered by Audible. Now, all you need to do is go to the Audible website, use your Amazon information to log into your Audible account, email address and password, and once you're logged in, click on the library menu. There you will find your free book, and all you have to do is click listen now to start listening. I'm not ashamed to admit that I cried like a baby. You also have the option to download the Audible app which will make it easier and faster to listen to the audiobooks in your library. From this point on, you have two choices. The first choice is to keep your Audible subscription and agree to be charged $14.95 per month. This will give you a monthly credit that you can use to listen to or download any audiobook of your choice, regardless of its price. If you want to enjoy one audiobook per month regardless of its price, simply make use of your subscription. The second choice is to cancel your Audible account before the end of the 30-day period. This way, you won't be charged $14.95, and you can keep access to your free audiobook indefinitely. To cancel your account, go to your Audible account, hover over the menu where your first name is displayed, and click on the Account Details link. On the page that appears, click on the Cancel Membership link. Scroll down the page, then click on Continue to Cancel on the next page. Audible will ask you for the reason for your departure. You can provide the reason of your choice, and then at the bottom of the page, click the Continue Canceling button. In this step, Audible will make a final attempt to keep you as a customer by offering you several deals that are truly interesting for audiobook enthusiasts. You can choose one of these offers if you wish to continue the adventure with Audible. Otherwise, click on Confirm Cancellation. There you go. Your Audible subscription is cancelled, 
and you still have your free audiobook in your library without paying anything. Your credit card has not been charged. Take a look. Together, we will verify if the offered book is still available after canceling the subscription. To do this, click on the Library menu. I confirm that the book is still here, available in your account. You can listen to it whenever you want by clicking the Listen Now button and listen to it as many times as you wish. I was crying because I knew that I was condemned to be a smoker for life. Now, if you want to enjoy a free book and listen to it at any time, click on the link below this video and follow the steps I just described. Thanks to this, you can listen to your book for free anytime and as many times as you want in your Audible account.